So welcome everyone to the April 8th meeting of the uh, Arlington Redevelopment Board. This open meeting of the Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, We've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor or governor's order suspends the requirement for open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. For this meeting, the Redevelopment Board is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. So please allow me to confirm that all members are present and can hear me, starting with Kin Lau. Here. David Watson. Present. Jean Benson. Present. Melissa Tintakalis. Okay, she will hopefully join us in a minute. And I am Rachel Zemberry, present as well. All right, so the first item on our agenda this evening is the continued public hearing for docket number 3647, 10 Sunnyside Avenue. And I understand that the applicant has requested a continuance. Uh, Jenny, was there a specific date that they had requested for the continuance? Um, yeah, so with this one, I think we need to go to uh, May 17th. Okay. Unless you wanna meet on a different evening of a week. I didn't think so, but no. here, the following, the next meeting that would be available and all of our upcoming meetings during town meeting will mm -hmm. basically be about 45 minutes long. So just realize that a lot of these are continued public hearings. We're going to be in the same, a similar situation that we were in on Monday night of this week where there's, it's a very compressed timeline. So as long as everybody is understanding of that, the nature of town meeting and the timeline then that'll be all set. But May 17th is the next option. Great, and is there a representative from um, the applicant for 10 Sunnyside Avenue here this evening to confirm whether that date works? No, no, mm -hmm. I've confirmed this with uh, their representative in, in advance of this meeting. Okay, great, thank you, Jenny. All right, is there a motion to continue the uh, hearing for uh, 10 Sunnyside Avenue to May 17th? So moved. Second. Great, we'll take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. David? Oh, you're on mute, David. Oh, I'm happy to vote yes, but I will not be here. That's that's fine. But you were <laughs> still on the board and you were here for the original one. So we'll, we'll still take that as a yes. Yes. Uh, Jean? Yes. Uh, Melissa? not joined us yet and I am a yes. So we will uh, continue docket number 3647 to May 17th and that will be at 7 p.m. All right uh, with that we will reopen docket number 3646 which is the continued public hearing for 1420 Massachusetts Avenue. And I see Tom Godfrey here. Um, uh, if you would like to uh, take up to five minutes to discuss the uh, revisions that you and your team have, have made um, relative to the prior application, uh, that would be fantastic. Great, thank you. Uh, good evening, Tom Godfrey with Fairbrier Development. And with me tonight is our architect, Doug Grunet from BK and Associates. Associates and our civil engineer, Randy Miron from Bowler Engineering. Um, tonight, in response to the board's comments from the last meeting, we have prepared two options for the board's consideration as it relates to the architecture and the finishes on the building. 
on both options, what we've done is the Mass Ave facade storefront has been expanded with floor to ceiling glass over probably a majority, close to two thirds of that front facade across Mass Ave. I will note that in the front left corner of that front facade, the area behind that houses the ATM and the cash counting area. So um, the glass did not, or storefront did not extend all the way over uh, because of uh, that interior use of the space there. Um, contextually, we've provided some pictures of our butters and other facades in the neighborhood. What we've tried to do is to incorporate some of these features and these materials into the design coupled with the board's suggestions of incorporating some brick, masonry, and clapboards. Um, what I'd like to do at this point is to turn it over to Doug Grunet from BK and Associate, Associates. Uh, he can better describe the, the details and the nuances of each of the options and, and the details that are shown on those elevations. Thank you, Tom. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Doug Gruner and I'm with BKA Architects and we are the architect of record for the project. Um, I'd like to just jump in here if we may for, with five minutes. Uh, we had a pretty lively conversation the last time of how uh, you uh, feel that the architecture uh, should be uh, improved to better suit the site. And uh, we've come up with two options as Mr. Godfrey indicated. Uh, the first option that's on the screen right here is a uh, pretty much the Mass Ave side is uh, cladded with uh, brick as well with a stone base. We've actually eliminated the awnings uh, that were on the last uh, option over those little uh, rectangle windows and actually uh, did a uh, proprietary green band wrapping across the entirety of the front uh, facade as well as uh, the adjacent side. Uh, the comments from the last time was that you wanted the building to look a little bit more urban. So I took a lot of design cues from a typical urban storefront, which is a layered approach. Uh, typically, you have the, uh, the streetscape human scale uh, layer uh, with their materiality uh, separated by an element, which I'm actually representing by the green band there, uh, to actually lead you up to the second story. And um, it's capped by a traditional cornice and whatnot. That's essentially what I'm doing here. We take in uh, many design cues from a uh, similar context around uh, uh, up and down Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, one of the things I like to point out is the element that's right above the entry doors is actually, it's a uh, one and a half story uh, transom window. And we've actually mimicked the design of the, of the doors above to actually uh, almost look like a Juliet balcony. Uh, which we actually found on uh, 887 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, we, we just like that detail and uh, we decided to uh, implement it here. Um, the facade is broken up with uh, vertical elements and these pilasters, which is a smooth PVC. Uh, the uh, two-story element at the entry is also cladded in a smooth PVC and a, a top is the traditional cornice. If you could actually zoom out a little bit, please, I could uh, describe the rest of the elevations. Uh, so the one to the immediate right is the side facing the parking lot and we're uh, continuing uh, the brick face uh, right around where the storefront is. Uh, the area that's to the right of that actually is the angled portion of the building. Uh, so um, it actually cants away from it. Uh, we've used a, um, a similar cover, colored ephus to actually uh, mimic the color of the brick and uh, with decorative score lines to give it a little bit of visual interest. As going back with the uh, urban theme, uh, the second layer is typically um, differentiated by either materiality or decorative design. So we've actually uh, taken a, a paneled uh, ephus design uh, with um, some caps to, to uh, visual caps to uh, top the cornice uh, or start. Top, top the pilasters essentially, give a little visual interest. We've actually also uh, continued the uh, Juliet balcony uh, detail on this side as well too. Could you uh, scroll down please? Uh, so the one, the, the, the uh, elevation that's uh, the lower left corner 
is the, the far left side is the uh, angled portion you see there. It's just a, a larger view of it because it's a different view of the building. Um, we're also continuing the uh, red EFIS look to the rear completely. And uh, one of the comments we mentioned that you wanted to us to look into doing a uh, white EPDM roof uh, to uh, reduce the albedo effect for the um, solar heat gain. And uh, we implemented it here in this building. Uh, the final side is the side that's adjacent to MassAv and it has the uh, ATM machine. And on the far right corner is the two-story brick uh, 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 motif that uh, we're showing on the Massachusetts Avenue. We're continuing that as we wrap around the corner and uh, terminating that where the, uh, the cornice ends and then uh, continuing the, uh, the top banding. So that is the first option. And we wanted to implement at least the ethos option because there are several contextual examples up and down the street. Um, so we just wanted to give it to you as an option. Uh, the second option is similar uh, with the, uh, the layering effect, but instead of doing the EFIS, we're actually doing a, uh, a dark brown clapboard and we're adding in uh, some more vertical elements to kind of break up that facade. Um, instead of the stone base, we're actually continuing the brick all the way down to the ground to kind of give it a continuity of materiality. Uh, if you can zoom out, please. So you can see all of the options. Uh, so uh, with the, uh, the clapboard uh, banding, uh, we could actually have a little bit more continuity for that top band. So that pretty much is con uh, continued uh, throughout the facade on all four sides, except the rear where the uh, roof line drops. We're also doing the white EPDM here as well too. And that is pretty much my presentation. And I welcome any questions you might have. Great, thank you. Um, I uh, appreciate your responsiveness and for providing um, several options here for us to, to take a look at. Um, before I turn, turn this over to my colleagues for, for their feedback, um, I, I think I'll just give you my uh, immediate feedback. Um, Jenny, if you could actually go to the second option, please. <clears throat> I think that my, my preference is uh, is definitely for this, this second option here where you've integrated both uh, the uh, masonry at the, um, we'll call it the, the pedestrian level and then the half story above uh, really goes to the, to the clapboard. And the, part of the reason that I um, am more in favor of this facade is that you've also upped some of the articulation of, of the, the bays that you're creating here on the on the Mass Avenue facade, um, and the the vertical elements don't stop here at the at the green cornice, but they in fact um, run. Um, they continue in this in this half story above to the to the upper cornice. A question I would have for you: um, We have maybe I can let's see if I can use the annotate feature here. This this. Um, cornice that you have here, this more or less this tower element, is there a reason that it doesn't span the entire bay here on the on the left hand side? Yeah, a couple of the uh, contextual examples we showed actually showed varying roof lines. So we actually uh, chose not to uh, span it all the way across to kind of give a little bit of articulation in the roof line and kind of give you two sizes of cornices. There's a cornice right below it as well um, to um, give a little bit right. of scale. So um, well, while I certainly appreciate that, I, I feel that, again, if our goal is to treat this as a comprehensive, you know, fully thought out um, facade, I'll, I'll leave it to my other colleagues to see if they agree with me, but I'd actually prefer to see this cornice com complete the language um, here and to, to, so that this becomes a singular element um, in and of itself and almost a secondary tower to, to what you have in the, in the entry. I think that um, I also would just like to clarify, um, I know that the signage isn't shown on this particular elevation, but I just wanted to clarify the intent because I think that's very important to the overall um, approval of the facade. Is the intent um, in uh, this window here to include the Citizens Bank logo, there was a, um, 
there was a window graphic that had been shown in one of the windows in the uh, previous iteration. Is that intended to, to still occur in this window here? Not that um, window, it's the window uh, to the, the right of that, I believe is where they intended to have that before. Okay. Um, I think as long as that is included as well as you know your, your signage above the entry, um, this is, is certainly moving in a, in a, in a better direction. Uh, but I will now turn it over to some of my colleagues for their comments, starting with Ken. Can I ask a oh, question or like a clarification on your comment? Uh, so you, your intention is not to bring that cornice all the way over to the tower element, just maybe you know, top it on top of that uh, first pilaster, essentially? What I'd like to do is to, to, to ensure that, that this entire bay reads as a it, basically a secondary tower element to, to the element that you have here. So it doesn't need to increase in height, but it, um, it currently, in, in the way that it's, it's looking, it's, it's confusing as to visually as to why it, it doesn't span this entire bay as a, as a singular element. Awesome. And, I, and I think it would, again, make this not feel like some sort of leftover side. I understand programmatically what, what you have going on behind here and why windows are not desirable. Um, but again, I, I think if that red as a single, single element and a, and a real bay, that it would be, um, that it would achieve what we're looking for it to do in terms of um, not having this look like a, um, a side ele elevation. The intention was to match the dimensional uh, line of the bay there, but I don't see that being an issue uh, to uh, complete the bay. Great. Any other clarifications I can? Um, just so I fully understand it. So it looks like the cornice needs to move or extend slightly towards the main entrance feature. Correct. Feet to kind of line up with that horizontal element uh, and the bay. So Correct. extend it four, five feet, whatever that dimension is. Okay. Right. So that it's a similar relationship. And again, is completing the, the same type of relationship that you have here at the corner. Right. Great. Uh, so I'll move to Ken. Um, thank you for addressing our issues. This is uh, um, a lot better than what you had before. Nor taught our, our concerns or not. Not saying what you had before was bad. I'm just saying this is a lot closer to what we're, we're, we're thinking of. Um, I totally agree with uh, Rachel about moving that cornice over uh, so that it seems like it engages that uh, pilaster and forms a corner. I also might go one step further. And if you look at the center window there, mm -hmm. it looks a little off to me. Uh, it, you have a, a little bit of a brick pilaster there. I think if you just move that window over, and just right, move the right to the pilaster. Um, I don't think the, the exchanging cost is about the same. It's it's not this, it's not a big deal. And just uh, make that all storefront. So it looks like it's three bays, not like a little piece of brick there. I don't know. It looks kind of a leftover too. Um, the other thing I, I, I have is um, your um, the material you have chosen for these pilasters is PVC. Correct. Um, have you worked with P PVC before? Not directly, uh, but I've seen it on a site before. Yeah, I'm just saying that PVC, uh, every 10 feet it moves half an inch um, in uh, winter and summer. So you're not going to get a, uh, one piece of PVC that height. So there are going to be joints there. So you got to think about those joints and how you do the outside corner. And it, uh, I found it when I used to just do this kind of stuff, it, it moves so much, it's too plasticky. Um, would you guys maybe consider EFIS there instead? Uh, yeah, we could possibly do that out of EFIS. That's a little more, I think that might be a little more stable and you get different you know, more colors and get a smooth EFIS. You, know? you don't have to get a very heavy textured EFIS. And then right. it'll, it'll look more of a masonry building than a smooth plasticky building, you know? Right. I, I think it'll look much richer uh, in, in all, you know. Uh, that's all I had for the elevations. I do want to go back to one thing that we didn't mention. That I don't think you guys addressed yet, or maybe you have, but didn't bring up. 
At the end of the driveways, right before it meets the, uh, the sidewalk, we had talked about um, some sort of trench drain or area drain to stop the water from running across the sidewalk. Will you guys be doing that? Uh, yep, I can address that. Um, we have been in close contact with DPW. We've mentioned that to them and um, we're working with them closely on the other issues, stormwater, water, sore. And if they determine it's warranted, uh, we will install it. If they think it's a good idea, we'd be happy to install it. Okay. Um, fine, I, I'm not gonna go over it. If they don't think it's necessary, I'm not gonna supersede them, but I just don't want water running off your parking lot across a public, a public sidewalk, that's all. Um, that's all I had, Rachel. Great, thank you, Ken. Uh, we'll move to David next. Uh, I have no additional comments. I I, uh, I agree with your yours and uh, Ken's comments. Great, thank you, David. Jean. Yes, I agree with my colleagues' comments too, and appreciate your being responsive. I have a couple of questions, though. Yeah, I think at some point, I don't know how we do the signage. Maybe we just delegate that to the uh, planning department to make sure the signage meets um, the requirements of the code. Um, I don't see any utilities on the roof. What's going to happen with utilities? How will the building be heated and cooled? So if you, if you could please zoom in a little bit to the upper uh, left corner. Uh, so there's a dash line shown beyond. That's the roof line. And then there's going to be a single rooftop unit that, um, that services the building that's shown in the dash line right there. Those are the only utilities that will be on the roof. So it won't be seen, you couldn't see it from the street. Right? Correct. And, um, okay, thanks. I asked the last time about the possibility of um, solar on the roof since then the town has come out with its net zero plan and one of its high priority measures is to have new buildings be at least solar ready on 50% of the roof. So I am wondering if you've talked to um, the appropriate people at Citizens Bank about the possibility of at least making the roof solar ready on at least 50% of the roof. And, and the reason is, you know, once these buildings are constructed, they, you lose the opportunity to get to net zero, which is part of the town's plan. So I am revisiting the issue, but rather than putting solar on, at least making half of the roof solar ready. Um, uh, I'm not sure I've come across that term yet in terms of solar ready. What does that actually entail? Um, it, it could be ready for solar panels. It could be ready for, um, that could be thermal or electric solar. The idea and I've talked to some people about why it's in the net zero plan is, and maybe some of my colleagues in Hepburn with this, you have to design the roof so that it will accommodate solar ready and therefore solar if you go there. So it's not requiring you to put the panels on the roof, just that you at least make it solar ready. Although I spoke to someone in the field who said, you know, once it's solar ready, I'll use a bank term for this, putting the panels on is almost like giving the bank a little ATM for um, savings in electricity, but we wouldn't require that. We just require at least half of the roof be solar ready. So I uh, think Tom? I understand that to mean structurally for Stru loading purposes. Yeah, yes, Tom, um, be solar ready. Just talk to your uh, structural engineer and, and, and tell him that he should design the roof for uh, 10 additional pounds per foot. He'll, he'll know what the weight is. Okay. okay not, that just made use, it. Don't use my thing, okay? But I'm not, I'm not an engineer here, but usually so, it's 10 extra pounds per, uh, per foot uh, 
uh, for dead load that's so added it, to the design of the roof. It's, it's minimal when you're doing it from the beginning like this. And okay. then I think you have to have some conduits or something to- Think about that in later, Gene. And that's not, okay. a, uh, that's not, that's not a deal breaker. Okay. It's just as okay. long as the, the roof can support the, uh, the panels. The additional what, load. Yes, and, yeah. that's, and that's the thing and everything else can be uh, put in afterwards. And it would only, you know, according to the net zero plan, it would be, it could be 100% of the roof if you wanted to, but only needs to be 50%. That's, those my, that's my only other comment. Great. Thank you, Jean. Um, let's see. Uh, any other comments or questions from the board before I open this up for public comments? I believe, Jenny, please correct me if I'm wrong, that Melissa was not part of the original hearing, correct? Okay, great. Correct. Ken, David, any other questions? No. Right. Thank you. Uh, seeing none, we will open uh, the hearing up for uh, public comment. Any member of the public? who is joining us this evening, who would like to speak, uh, ask any questions or make any comments regarding this uh, docket number, please use the raise hand function in the participant section at the bottom of your screen in Zoom. I will call on you in the order that the hands are raised. You'll have three minutes to address the board. Please identify yourself by your first, last name and address. Give you a few minutes. I do not see any public comments. So seeing none, we will uh, close the public comment period. Um, Madam Chairwoman. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see, see your hand raised. Would no, you no, you, it, it was not you. It was me. And um, I'm having a little trouble with. That's no problem. Would you like to? to um, yes, I have a comment. Uh, Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, I'm a member of the tree committee and um, I know that uh, we're, you're talking design details today, so this is not quite germane to exactly what you folks are talking about, because I'm not sure at what point to, uh, to inject my comments about trees. Is it appropriate? This would be, yes, please do. Uh, we, we previously had looked at a site plan where uh, there was a tree planting plan including, um, yes. I'm not sure if, if Jenny or Aaron would be able to pull that up, but this would be the, the perfect time to have that discussion. Okay, um, and I have to apologize. I was unable to uh, attend when we had the uh, earlier discussions about this particular site. Um, very quickly then, um, and, and this all, uh, already may be covered, so I apologize if it's being redundant. I just want to say um, uh, we encourage the planting of large shade trees, not just small decorative trees, but large shade trees uh, on this site in that um, this particular area along Mass Ave has, uh, has, has lost a lot of trees and uh, quite recently Arlington DPW is out trying to plant some along Mass Ave farther along, uh, farther west. Uh, however, we encourage large shade trees because we've had such a decline of all the Norway maples in this particular area. So, uh, oh, is this the tree plan? Uh, the utility plan, but we'll squirrel and we'll we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, I just I, I just want to uh, strongly uh, suggest uh, the addition of as many trees as makes sense and as possible of the large variety to uh, to add to the shade tree urban canopy in town. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Moore. So, um, Tom, I I know that you had addressed this previously and that you do have. Um, at least one, if not several trees planned for the site, if that's something that you could just address um, for, for the member of the um, tree commission. Yes, uh, I think a few of your fellow members did uh, participate and comment, uh, I believe in the first meeting and had a similar comment. And after that meeting, I contacted the tree warden in town and sent him the site plan and discussed uh, adding some additional trees and what type uh, would work and fit on the site. And we do have two shade trees uh, in the front of the building. Uh, you'll see the pocket park uh, in the front along the sidewalk to the left of that pocket park near the double bike rack right behind there. We have two uh, shade trees planned there. 
And then we have some ornamental, two ornamental trees planned for the back. And uh, we are lucky enough to have one of the um, few remaining larger street trees uh, in the sidewalk to the right near the entrance um, that exists today um, in the sidewalk, which is shown uh, on the right there by the handicap ramp. Yeah, and, and Tom, if, 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 I may, if I can interrupt, this is Randy with Bowler. The, the, the plan in front of us here is actually a, a bit outdated. Uh, we've since submitted a revised landscape plan uh, that shows those additional trees that you just referenced. Okay, thank you, Randy. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Madam Chair, can I just do one follow-up? Please, Steve. Yes, uh, I, I wanna say through the board, uh, thank you so much for considering those uh, additions. Um, the tree warden is, uh, is the guy to work with. So, so you've done very well and I'm sorry to be redundant. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I, and I do wanna thank the, um, the applicant and your team for being so responsive when that question was asked um, originally too. So thank you, thank you for doing that. Um, let's see, I'll open it back up to the, so I, I'll now close public comments because I don't see any other hands raised. Um, and I'll turn it back over to the, to the board to see if there are any, um, any further questions for the, uh, for the applicant um, prior to, to moving uh, to a, a motion uh, towards approval. I have no further questions. No further questions? The signage will be taken care of later, right? So, Kim, there was a previous signage plan that was that was submitted, which um, we had taken a look at um, in the first and then the, the second hearing, um, which we we did did review and identify was was in compliance with um, with the requirements. And then, um, so to, tonight, I think just the one question I had was about which of the windows the, the decal would, okay. would occur in. So we're approving the signage too tonight? Yes. Okay. I have no problem with that. I, I, may I just interject, Rachel? Please. I would suggest that they submit a final plan with the signs uh, to my department for approval so we have it on an accurate plan. Because right now I'm like, you know, uh, we have an old plan with the, with the signs on an old facade now. And the facade, right. depending upon what option you've chosen, um, it'll be out of date. So I, I, I would prefer that the final sign plan is approved, is reviewed and approved by the department. Yeah, I agree with that. It goes for the landscaping plan as a result of any of these uh, changes along Mass Ave. Mass Ave. Agree. So why don't I actually run through um, run, run through a list of the items that we would like you to um, revise and and review have reviewed by the, the department? It would not need they would not need to come back in front of the the board, but would be um, reviewed by by Jenny and, and her her team in the planning department. So we have the final uh, signage plan should be submitted to the board or to the uh, department for review and approval the final landscaping plan submitted to the department for final review and approval, update the elevations to um, substitute uh, EFIS for the vertical elements instead of PVC on the, on the facade. Uh, we'll go with option two as opposed to option one. And we'd like you to look at extending the cornice at the left bay of the front facade to the end of the bay to complete that um, that full element. And then you had identified also that you are currently working with the DPW for uh, site drainage. So um, if we can also request that you abide by the recommendations as provided by the DPW. Are there any other items? Uh, Just teams? at least 50% of this, the roof be solar ready. Right, and that one too. So 50% of the, the roof um, should be designed to be solar ready. From at least 50%. At least fifty percent. Yes. Rachel, I was actually looking at the drawings when you were saying the early part of your thing. Did you say about the pilaster, uh, the leaving the pilaster in the center bay, the brick pilaster? Uh, I did not, but thank you for for pointing that out, um, and also removing the um, the brick pilaster in the the center the center window. Understood. Thank you, Ken.
Uh, do my other members of the board feel comfortable with those as administrative reviews rather than coming back in front of the board? Great. Is well, there or special uh, permit conditions? I'll just um for the sake of sharing the this is in the memo, but the the typical general conditions, of course, in the permit, and then I'll we'll add um, the special conditions that we just discussed. I would just say that all of the design elements that you just were mentioning. I would ask just for an updated elevation to include all of those different elements. And then separately the sign plan, um, just so that I can re-review all of that material. Great, thank you, Jenny. Thank you. All right, is there a uh, motion to approve uh, this project um, with the special conditions and revisions that were just outlined? So moved. Second. We'll take a roll call vote. Ken? Yes. David? Yes. Jean? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Thank you very much to the entire team. We really appreciate uh, you working with us uh, on, the, uh, on the modifications for this building. So thank you. Great. And they'll get, a, they'll get the special permit in the mail in what, a week or two, something like that. No. no? <laughs> No, no, it's a, <laughs> it's not that fast. Um, no, we will, we will sign the decision and then file it. And there's a 20 day appeal period. Um, so you will be in touch with you, my department. Great, thank you very much. Great, thank you. Thank you. And all the members of the board and Glennon as well. Thank you. Thank you, have a good evening. You as well. All right, so that will close agenda item number one, our continued public hearings. And we will now move to agenda item number two, which is to finalize the report to town meeting. And um, I would just first like to thank the members of the department for working so quickly in, in pulling this together. I know that this is a very short timeline. So um, Aaron and uh, Kelly and, and Jenny, um, thank you so much for, for pulling this very comprehensive report together. And I'll turn it over to you, Jenny. Well, first, you're welcome. And also thank you to Erin and Kelly um, for their work on this, especially up till about an hour ago, I think, uh, because we were accepting edits from uh, some of the board members. So we'll, I think I'll just kind of roll through and maybe talk about those edits, um, the great. people who contributed. Um, and of course, stop at any time if you have new edits, by the way. I do have is, yeah, questions or suggestions on two items when we it, get to them. Okay, not here though. No. Or, no, okay. So this is just our traditional introduction and overview of the um, who we are and uh, the process, including the, um, the advertising and notification that's required. Um, and then uh, we've, uh, this is a hyperlinked uh, to the articles we put in a summary of recommendations just since there's so many um, and to the person who may just want to know exactly how we acted or what action was taken it's right here right up front um, and also links back to a date of a hearing i suppose one other thing we could do is um, um i'm just thinking out loud but put like a hyperlink to that meeting so that people could get uh, more information about what happened at the hearing if they wanted to watch it even um, and then we run through the articles. So with the, I'll, I'll just roll and you tell me to stop if you want. Um, so article 28. Uh, Jenny, not to oh, interrupt, yeah. but this no, no, isn't, please. this, yeah, this isn't the edited, this isn't, um, this doesn't incorporate Jean and Rachel's comments. Um, that is such a bummer. <laughs> Where is that? Um, if, if you want me to, I have yeah, why don't you here. share it then? I, share it. <laughs> I went right out of the, uh, the folder. Yeah, it's in the town meeting folder. Okay. <laughs> we have a lot of folders. I now everybody knows. Understand. <laughs> There's a lot of file management. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that I, I'm, uh, wasn't clear when we were communicating no, earlier. That's okay. <laughs> But everything okay. has been incorporated. So if you did make an edit already, we probably received it and made it. So, yeah, 
So um, just some minor things here, and then I'll catch, up, catch us up to where we were. Uh, was Article 35 missing from the table of contents? Nope, right here. No, up, up. Oh. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's a heading issue that can be fixed. Um, I don't think I've shared live on a ARB meeting. So please let me know if it needs to be zoomed in or zoomed out. Yep, Fine. it's a good size. Looks good. Okay. Um, so just a couple of things here. Um, couple items on this one. Uh, some edits in the discussion for Article 30. Again, just clarifying. Yep. I'll keep scrolling. Again, just some minor items. Minor items here too. Uh, again, minor items. Th that was the suite of basically administrative corrections. Um, a couple of edits related to the marijuana article. Um, so on the industrial um, uses, uh, there is um, some minor wordsmithing and uh, grammatical type of stuff. Um, Jean did ask for um, some commentary about the pro forma analysis that RKG completed. Um, so this uh, summarizes it and then leads into the discussion about the benefits of including um, residential in the industrial district mixed uses projects. Thank you for adding that, which I didn't write. So Aaron wrote it. So thank you, Aaron. And You're welcome. That, that uh, change addresses my comment with this article as well. Great. Um, so uh, just wrapping it up, some minor items here. Can we pause for one second? This one has that as amended in the vote. Um, and I know, Jean, you had a question about that or a comment. Should we, that, and there may have been prior ones, but I just, you stopped here, yeah, so there, I noticed it. There are about it. three or four of them like that. I think they probably could be deleted. Okay. Yeah, because the article's not amended. It's yeah. the main motion was changed. Right. right. So there are about three or four of them like that. Okay, that's easy. Um, and and Jean, this is the recommendation that you had to change yeah. this. I um, think that's nice. It's, yeah. I think it's helpful when the town meeting members are looking at it. Yep. Um, so I'll just quickly scroll through the, there's like five pages here. Sorry. Okay, um, again, just some uh, minor wordsmithing. I think this came from Jean as well. Yeah, I think, I think 36 is missing from that table of contents as well. It is. Yeah, I think I just need to update the formatting of this heading and then the table of contents will update. Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure all the final formatting also is, you know, there's some things that are spilling over and probably after this comment, um, you know, goes away, all the comments, it'll be aligned better. Absolutely. Um, so uh, relatively straightforward here. Um, again, just some, I think there were some tense issues in this, this paragraph that were caught. Yeah. 
Um, just uh, both Jean and Rachel actually provided the same edit here. Oh, right, Rachel. <laughs> nice to be aligned. Yep. <laughs> um, so very minor. Um, this uh, Jean and Rachel put their touch on this one, um, just making the discussion more rounded out and, and referencing back to the master plan. Look good? Okay. Yes. Um, same here too, just some uh, rounding out of the discussion. Okay. Uh, again, just some, uh, I also believe this came from Jean. Looks like this is a different font, but that's okay. Great. Okay. Uh, nothing here, because um, this was withdrawn. Uh, some minor edits here relative to ADUs. Um, again, minor edits. Great. Um, also relatively straightforward. Can we just hang on for a second? I, I had Absolutely. some thoughts on this and I, I just want to read what's been added. Aaron, the font issue is the same in there as it was in the prior edition. Sorry about that. I won't do it while David's reading. So, um, no, go ahead. Um, so I, I think this at least partially uh, addresses what I wanted to add, um, which is to, to make, it make it clear that there was concern about the, um, um, the financial viability of, of the proposal. Um, I didn't know, I was thinking perhaps we wanted to preface this with a statement that um, that the ARB recognizes the need for more affordable housing in Arlington, um, but for the reasons stated below, believes that this proposal would not achieve the goal uh, or, or something to that effect. And I, what I actually wrote was, an, uh, uh, but for the reasons stated below, believes that this proposal will not achieve that goal and may actually reduce the development of affordable housing in Arlington, and then go through the whole explanation. Um, I like the idea of an introductory sentence. I, I think, you know, um, feelings were running high on, on this article, um, and, and I just want to make it very clear where the board is coming from. Um, before diving into the technical details. I okay. agree. Would you repeat your yep. addition? Um, Aaron, do you want to live type? Nah, okay. do my best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so David, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the ARB recognizes the need for more affordable housing in Arlington, comma, But for the reasons stated below, believes that this proposal will not achieve that goal and may actually reduce the development of affordable housing in Arlington. And if anyone wants to further wordsmith it, I am um, not wedded to the exact language. That's fine. 
Yeah, I have no, I, I think that's worded well. Do we, is it later in this discussion that we mentioned the housing production plan then? Yes, yes. yes. it wraps up with right. the housing production plan. Okay, yeah. then I think that's a good bookend. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you go back up to that though, it's where you were where that's, I'm just wondering, that's the only place where we put the discussion at that point. What do you mean? Well, look, look at one of the previous articles, for example. Oh, you mean where the text starts under the heading? Yeah. yeah. Like go up to Article 44, for example. Oh, okay, it's fine then. I'm sorry, that's fine. Yeah. Great. Good. Okay. Uh, there's nothing here, I believe. Oh, just some words missing at the end. No, I think you captured it very clearly. Great. Um, some updates here. Nothing too big. Um, this sentence was awkward, so I tried to clean it up a little bit. Excellent, good cleanup. Great. Okay. It, shouldn't it be which describes with an S? Probably. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. And then um, Rachel had a, uh, and Jean brought this up, sort of summarizing some of the uh, concerns that the ARB had on Monday night. So I watched the tape. Um, and, and summarized it in that, that first paragraph. I just say where it says maybe needed, it might be better to say this article sees what is needed to meet the stated purposes. I just make it stronger, just the very last line. Oh. Thank you. Is rather, than, is rather than maybe. I agree. Thank you for wordsmithing that and adding that section in. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. I think it's um, important to include. And then just some minor things in the rest. And that's it. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you for pulling all of those together. Are there any uh, questions or additional comments on the report? Not for me. All right. Uh, is there a motion to approve the uh, report to be submitted to town meeting uh, as amended in our meeting this evening? So moved. Second. We'll take a vote. Ken? Oh, Ken, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Yes? Jean? Yes. David? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Great. Thank you. Um, and thank you again to Aaron and Kelly for all their work, especially today, <laughs> last minute stuff, and yeah. all of you for providing the edits in advance. Um, so we are going to make all the amendments, we'll accept the changes, clean it up, make sure it's all formatted, um, capture the vote that just happened on the cover page. Um, and then what we are doing is we're printing them off and providing them um, in the packet that is actually there is actually be, some things get mailed to town meeting members still so people will receive this directly which will be i think important a lot of people do like to have it physically 
in their hands, um, even though, of course, just like the last uh, town meetings, it will be an interactive agenda. Um, and then uh, just lastly, the Master Plan Implementation Committee also uh, prepared a report. I'll forward that to you separately just so you have a copy of it, but that also will be uploaded to the, uh, to the town meeting page as well as put into packets. We thought that it was also important to provide, especially to new town meeting members, details about what the Arlington Master Plan is and the work that we've been doing to accomplish the Master Plan. Um, Jean. A couple questions. One is, um, or suggestions is that we get this to the select board um, oh. next week. Yeah, so, forgot about so that they, one. Sorry. You know, so, <laughs> yeah, they, so they know in advance um, yeah. what we're recommending on each thing. And if they have any questions, they can talk to you or Adam or however the communication lines work with those right. sorts of things. So um, to add on to what I said, tomorrow morning, I'm also providing the board with the finished, the final copy for their meeting on Monday night. And we'll be talking with them about the three articles that they were interested in providing um, their own, you know, discussion about in the, for their report to town meeting. Um, they may make a reference to this, which includes the ADU article, energy efficient homes, and the industrial uses. Um, and of course, it would pick, you know, likely piggyback on things that we've discussed um, and the information that we'll be sharing with them. And I plan to attend that meeting on Monday night. Great. Um, so for town meeting, is it going to be a Zoom town meeting or are people going to be sitting out in a field somewhere? It's a virtual town meeting. And I mean, people might be sitting in a field, but it will be virtual, yes. And should, should we, can we sort of join the meeting as the ARB? You know, because when we had in-person meetings, we were all there, could answer questions, things like that. You could, if you do plan to be there, um, if you could, maybe Rachel and I can <clears throat> talk with you about just preparing because Rachel and I are actually doing the town meeting videos. There's not like a live presentation like there is a normal town mm -hmm. meeting. It'll be the same as the special town meeting in the fall. Mm -hmm. So next week we're re recording all the videos um, and then we would actually be the technical, um, you know, providing any technical answers for ARB articles and then potentially for petitioner articles. Um, but if you do plan to attend, you're welcome to. I just would need to know if you want to because you'd need a specific kind of login um, in order to join mm -hmm. the meeting. Otherwise, anybody can watch town meeting, of course, because it will be live on ACMI. Um, and then also we are not like it normally or it used to be with zoning articles being first. So it's likely that our articles won't start until uh, maybe the third night of town meeting. I can't quite project right now. Uh, Jenny, what's going to happen with the substitute uh, substitute motions? How does that work? Um, the way that well, I have I have not seen anything yet. Um, but whenever there is something, I will of course let the board know. Um, and uh, you know, depending upon town meeting and their desire to entertain such a uh, special uh, substitute motion, um, it may be re it may open it up that petitioner will be able to discuss what they had intended to do and the, the purpose of their article and the body will go from there. Um, in terms of the board's role at that point, um, all that it really does is uh, perhaps push us to answer some more questions than what was already provided in the great report that we've provided. Because okay. not every, you know, some people are gonna step in or dip into this process right when they're getting that report but may not have all the nuance of attending the hearings or the various technical memos that were prepared for those hearings. So we might need to bring up some of that uh, more nuanced conversations to town meetings should uh, a substitute motion come forward. Okay. And we've, we've experienced that before. So uh, yeah. I mean, town, town meeting did, um, did override our recommendation through a substitute motion on one article last time. Yes, that's why I was. That's why I'm, I'm sort of mentioning it now to see what happens. Because and and some of these are that was a relatively innocuous article too, and some of these are much more substantial. And and that's the one where the one last year is we got that interesting attorney general's letter. Thank you for sharing. So correct. How does that get distributed? Do we put it up? Do you put it up on the web page? How do people know? about what the AG had to say about that. 
We did, we put it on the redevelopment boards page. And I think we will try to coordinate with the town clerk, who's the one who receives those letters mm -hmm. um, to figure out a way to distribute it to town meeting members perhaps. It almost felt like a little I told you so when I read it. I, just say that. <laughs> I thought it was an important caution to think about both in our, in terms of our special permitting as well as you know uh, amendments to the zoning bylaw and a caution that we have a lot of great ideas and ideals, but they may not actually align with the zoning bylaw or the enforcement of that bylaw. Right. I think that was the primary message, but I, I will note, I think there's some gray areas to that, which we don't find ourselves in to any gray area right this moment, but maybe in the future, we might find ourselves walking a line. And I'm glad to answer questions about that memo. I know I sent it just yesterday as part of the, to accompany the, the uh, report. Um, and that's all, thank you. I just wanted to say thank you for the nice little mention of me in the report. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you. When's your last day on the um, ARB actually, David, I've forgotten. Uh, technically uh, the 16th, the week from tomorrow, but we don't have any meetings between now and then. So this oh. is it. <laughs> well, Dave. Best of luck to you. We're yeah, going to miss you. Thank you. I agree. I'm going to miss you and your bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just send us a screenshot. We can use that as our background. <laughs> well, you know, I could always just log on to ARB meetings, but not actually be sitting here. You can just see the bookshelf. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else related to the report or the next steps regarding town meeting? All right, then we'll move on to agenda item number three, which uh, is the meeting minutes from March 15th, 2021. Uh, let's see, are there any amendments? I had a few, but I'll start to see, maybe Jean, I'll start with you. If, if you may have caught some it, of the ones that I did. Yeah, maybe we caught the same ones. We're thinking alike now. Well, it oh. seems like we were last night or this morning when we <laughs> did I'll, the I'll start at the very top, the very, very top. The meeting started at 6 p.m., not 7.30 p.m. I looked it up because I was, really? When were we starting meetings at 7.30? It was a long meeting, yes. That's all I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like an old header. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think we probably made the mistake last time. I think one of the meetings, minutes we approved last time had the wrong starting time. I think you're right. It's March 1st. Um, these are provided by the, uh, a transcription service, actually. Mm -hmm. So I'll make that note. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't have anything else on the first page. I had something on the second page, though. Is there anything else on the first page from anybody else? Uh, I had, I had two. So my question is where we talk about the votes, there were a couple where um, Melissa had to abstain. Um, do you typically show the, it, it reads as if it's four pro one against, do you typically show the abstaining vote? I, I typically don't in my minutes. Yeah, it would actually be more like four zero, zero one. one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's in that paragraph. And it's okay. also again, a little bit um, further down, yeah, at the bottom of the page. Great. And then the other in the third paragraph um, on this first page, where we talk, there's, um, uh, we were talking about the building materials. Um, it's right above there where I said the chair commented on the design state. Um, she, it says here she would prefer clapboard. So it's in the third the third from the bottom right there. It, uh, I said prefer clapboard or masonry. Perfect. That's all I had on that page. Anything else from anybody else? I, 
I have something here. Um, in uh, the paragraph uh, about Nick Stein's comment, um, I think I'm not quite sure what I said, but what I meant was Mr. Watson replied that the board's concern is not with developer profits, but with the feasibility of investment in building projects. Yeah, I think the rest of that's fine. And if we could go back up to the first paragraph where it says, Mr. Benson stated the need, it should say the need to add to the MOU compliance with get rid of four, right? That's all I had on page two. So on this page, um, we, we have that we moved to the, if you can go up actually a little bit, um, we had that we, oh, we moved to the fourth item on the agenda. It says here, and opened the meeting to public comment. We rather reopened the public hearing Um, and then great. And then um, I would eliminate absent public comment because there was no public comment to start. So we move to Article Forty Five, and what's missing here is um, the reference to the proponents. Um, presentation, like we mentioned in the other articles, um, that Laura did her her presentation, and that a discussion by the board followed. There was a, quite a long discussion by the board. I don't in the other um, in the other meeting minute sections of the other articles. It we it doesn't detail what the board's discussion was. I think we can decide whether or not that's what we want to show or not, but um, at a minimum, we should identify that that occurred. Yes, I, excellent point. Does anybody want to add to that? I have a vague recollection that there was maybe one article, Rachel, where you took public comment first before we had discussion. Does that ring a bell? Uh, I don't maybe, think so. Maybe not. <laughs> No, I'm pretty sure I remember that because this was a very long evening that that she was the first person on our this article was the first article on our agenda for the reopened public hearing and um, I believe we moved right into it. Okay. I don't have anything else on page two. On page three, go back up, where it has John Sanbo. Sanbo is not the name. It's Senbonmatsu, S-A-N-B-O-N-M-A-T-S-U. Thank you. S-A, that's it. All right, any other comments on page three? Move to page four. I didn't have any comments on page four. Okay, we'll move to page five. Sorry, I'm just, I'm, I just caught something that doesn't okay. seem right. So on page five, the um, paragraph that starts with Mr. Carson. Um, right. So where it says there, um, uh, instead of Posse disputing the statement that had been made, I, I actually disputed it, and then Posse confirmed it. And it wasn't Mr. Carson who made that claim. It's Mr. Borson who made the claim. Because I remember who it was who did it. B-R-O-R-S-O-N.
So, no. Um, but so then, oh, and, and then, wait, um, the chair disputed this? Yes. Um, and then, and then was there more? Sorry. And then Mr. And I apologize. I don't know how to pronounce Posse's last name. Is it? Mietnin. Mietnin. He He's the one who confirmed it. Well, he didn't confirm it. What he said was that he doesn't have any commercial interest in. Right. In By confirming, I'm right. He, he confirmed the dispute. He, he, <laughs> um, Better to say he has no commercial. Perfect. Interest. Thank you. I think it's better to just state the fact. Right. Perfect. Um, did I, did Mr. Carson appear elsewhere? <laughs> I think somewhere else, but I can't remember okay. where it was. I think the bottom of page four. I'd have thought there might also be a Mr. Carson, but you're right, it's, it's person. Oh, there it is. Too. Yep, person. Thank you. Okay, anything else on page five? I had something, the last line in page five, which is probably, where is it now? Maybe it's on page six now. I don't see it, maybe it's later. What it, what is it? I'm sorry. It what is it in the ADU article? No, I thought it was in the, the article about the energy efficient foundations. Can we go back there? Yeah. It's right here. Uh, um, oh, there I'm it is, that. right there. What does that mean? It still will be twenty tighter than the code. Times maybe. I don't know but I didn't know what that meant 20 tighter than the code. There was a reference standard, it might be 20%. Yeah. I think, I think there was a percentage that is in his, in his article um, that, that this refers to. Okay. So you're yeah. constantly improving. That at least makes it seem better to add the percentage. Believe me, that's correct. It's 20% greater than what the new code would be. Okay, great, thanks. <coughs> Good. All right, anything else on page uh, five? Or page six. I had something on the bottom of page seven. There's another Mr. Carson here. Oh, I just saw that too. Is this, so, um, this is the bottom of page seven? Yes, so in the second to last sentence, the chair moved to warrant article review. That was um, relative to the select boards uh, this, to review the warrant articles um, that were coming in front of the select board. So I just wanted to make sure it was clear. And then on the following page, um, there was uh, an answer to Mr. Watson, Ms. Wright confirmed that the notes were due the coming Wednesday. I think we should just make it clear that it's notes relative to, again, the um, warrant articles coming in front of the select board. Are there any other 
revisions? No. All right. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes of March 15th, 2021 as amended? So moved. Second. We'll take a vote. Kim? Yes. David? Yes. Jean? Yes. And I am a yes as well. So the meeting minutes from March 15th, 2021 are approved. And we'll now move to open forum. Uh, any member of the public wishing to speak, please use the raise hand function. All right, seeing none, we will close public forum. And that's all we have on our agenda this evening. This is oh, our first okay. non five or six hour meeting we've had in a couple of weeks. So congratulations, everyone. <laughs> And thank you so much, David, for everything. Indeed. Thanks to all of you. Mm -hmm. I've, I've learned so much over the last four plus years and uh, um, it's been great working with all of you. Not without its challenges, <laughs> but um, it, it, I, I feel like we got a lot done and did some good for the town. So thank you for working with me. And Erin, uh, best of luck up in Maine. Thank you. Yes, Erin, thank you so much. Thank you. That's everyone as well. Wish me luck. It's it's the big move weekend, so we'll see oh how this goodness. goes. Oh, um, this your last day too, Erin? Uh, Friday. Oh, okay. Essentially for us. Yes. And when do you, when do you start the new job? On the 20th. So. Two days to Yep. Yep. Get cars re-registered, find vaccine appointments, hopefully, and go from there. Uh, they like to say A a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mike's been working on his main accent, so it'll it'll be fun regardless. <laughs> but thank you so much. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn this evening? So motioned. Second. I knew David had to do something. I know, I was waiting for David to take his last vote here. Well, I mean, let me reframe then. David, you want you wanna? <laughs> so moved. Okay. I'll second it. All right, uh, Ken? Yes. David? Yes. Dean? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. All right. Have a great Thank evening. Bye-bye. Have a nice weekend. Good night. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.